when we first started to teach in black studies in San Francisco State, my sister, I got there because a woman by the name of Jean Hudson had given me um, books. She used to tell this story to all my students, to my chagrin. I would go back to the back of the room to try to hide. You know, I'd gone, I'd, I'd answered an ad in the New York Times that said uh, they needed a writer for their firm. Answer the, the Times ad, X, Y, W, Z, you know, that, that had those ads like that, and send a sample of your writing. I said, what the heck? I'm out of Hunter. I'm, my dad said, you got to get a job before you start teaching, okay? So I sent that out. He looked at me like, are you kidding? I got a telegram on a Saturday. A telegram came on a Saturday and said, report to work. They had hired me report from my, my writing sample. That Monday, I mean that Sunday, that Monday, I got up and put on, made sure my blue suit, my one little blue suit was pressed. I had a blue suit on, blue shoes on, blue hat on, <laughs> blue purse and white gloves. Oh, I right. knew. <laughs> I was this 19 like year old you are now. <laughs> going downtown, you know, for this job. I did not get there at CP time. I got there at 8.30. It's at 9 o'clock. I got there at 8.30. <laughs> and I'm standing outside the door with my telegram in my hand, like, whoa, I got a job, got a job, doing something that my father said I would never get a job doing, writing. He said, girl, that's okay, but you're not, you, you can't get a job. You know, you're going to teach. You're going to get a job. You'll be secure, right? This woman came to the door, and she was unlocking the door. She said, yes. I showed her the telegram this big smile on my face, and she said, she looked at the telegram and said, mm-hmm, come in. I, I remember I came in, and she put her stuff down, and blah, 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 and she went to the back, whatever, and I sat down. And then her head came around like this, you know, and the male, I smiled. Another head came around the other way. I smiled, <laughs> and a third head came. By 10 minutes to 9, a man walked out and said, I stood up, my little telegram in my hand, he said, I'm sorry, the job is taken, has been taken. I said, New York humor. I said, should I go outside the door and come back in at 9 o'clock? <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I said, I'm early. I'm due here at 9 o'clock, so the job will be ready at 9 o'clock. I'm early. Being funny, right? Man hasn't cracked a smile. He said, the job is taken. Then I said, I know. It's, you're discriminating against me. He looked at me straight. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to go report you to the Urban League. He said, and walked away, went on back behind. I never saw what all those offices behind, whatever. I took off my hat. I was so mad. I, I took off my gloves. I went to the subway, and I'm going up to the Urban League because I know where the Urban League is, right? So I get on the train. You should never get on the subway mad. <laughs> so I get on the subway, number two and number three. You have to get off at 96th Street, oh, you know, in order to stay on the west side. Otherwise, that train is going to go shakily to the east side, right, to 110th Street. And lo and behold, I felt the shaking, you know, whatever. And I said, oh, no. I, I mean, I, then I, this was it. I, I, I started <laughs> to cry. I just sat there. I said, oh. I mean, I was so defeated. Got out 135th Street, cross, cross 135th Street, and going right there, into about a quarter into the uh, block sign said Schomburg. There was a man standing out smoking a cigarette. I looked up and said, Schomburg, what is that? I said, brother. I didn't say brother. I said, mister, what is that? Uh, who, what's the Schomburg? He said, you can go inside and ask, uh, and I didn't even hear the name. He said, but you have to sign in first. So I came in, they had the sign in sheet right inside the door, right? And I went inside and the old Schomburg Oh, my sister, Dr. Cosby, Sister Camille, had this long, long table, and all these men were sitting there, these scholars, with their head down, with books almost up to the ceiling. Oh. And then they had this glass door, and Miss Hudson was in that glass door, and I went and knocked on the door. Miss Jean Hudson. Jean Hudson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, she came out, she said, yes, dear. You know, she was so gentle. Mm -hmm. I said, what kind of library is the Schomburg? She said, oh, dear. <laughs> she said, this library is a library that has books only by and about black folks. And I said, at 19 and a half, I guess there must not be many books in here then. Ooh. 
She never let and me forget that. I mean, <laughs> I mean amu in, a, in, a, in an amusing kind of way, yes, you know. I mean, she, yes. used to, she used to crack me up. I used to bring my students. I used to bust them from Amherst, bust them from <laughs> Philly every semester. And she would be standing there, and she got, she'd look at me with this sly smile. And she said, I'm going to tell you a story about your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the story. And my students turned and said, we got something on you, prof. We got something on you. But she sat me down at the table. She said, I'm going to bring you some books. So sit down. I mean, she was, you know, she said, yeah, teach, this, teach this young person something. And she, literally, we made room, and I eased my chair, and I'm sitting there. Ten minutes passed. I'm sitting there, 15 minutes, I'm watching all this. Man, they haven't looked up yet. They haven't acknowledged that you're sitting there, that you're breathing, that you're sniffing, whatever, at all. They are writing and going through their books. And then all of a sudden, she brought three books, put them down. The books were on the bottom, Up From Slavery, uh, Middle One, Souls of Black Folk, Top One, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Wow. She says, read. And I start reading, and by the time I got... De I dealt with the black English in there. I must have read about a third of the, third of the book, and I eased out, and when I knocked on the door, I had tears in my eyes. I was sobbing. I said, how could I be an educated woman and not have read this book? She said, I know, dear, and I go read some more. So I went back, <laughs> and I eased back in, and I sat down, and I, I, I mean, I was, I was crying as I was reading. Bless I her. got to two-thirds of it. That's why I called her name on the brother's show, the TV show in New York. No one had called his, her name out. And he asked me, who influenced you the most? And I said, Shirley Graham Du Bois, Queen Mother Moore, Malcolm. And I looked up and said, Jean Hudson. Fantastic. You know, I said, my grandmother, you know, whatever. And she called me by the time I got back here in Philadelphia. She said, so no one had given her praise. No one had said, Jean Hudson could do this and do that, whatever. I mean, out loud, I meant, you yes, know, out yes. loud. And I was so, I mean, that was an ancestor doing that to me because it was like yes. I stopped and I said, oh, Jean Hudson, whatever. Um, you know, so she sat me down and I got up, almost finished with the book, and I'm, I'm almost sobbing. And she said, yes, dear, go read all the books. She said, right, <laughs> that I brought you. And the third time well, I went back so in. Especially she didn't think there were very many. That's right, <laughs> yes. you know? Yes. And when I got in for the third time, this man, this scholar, said, Miss Hudson, will you tell this young woman either she sits still or she has to leave? <laughs> so I sat still, and I was reading. You know, and she said to me, I'll never forget, would you like a pad and a pencil? I said, I have a pen. And I, and I know I had something in my, I always carried something, right, I always carried something. And she, and she gave me, the, I never forget, she gave me this little, some paper, folded up paper. 